Good morning, and thank you for joining us here at Orioles Park at Camden Yards as we celebrate the beginning of the next chapter of Orioles baseball. My name is Rob Long. I'm a broadcaster with the Baltimore Orioles, and it is an honor for me to be here for this significant occasion. But before we get started, we would like to take a moment to acknowledge the tragedy that took place at the Francis Scott Key Bridge on Tuesday morning. Our hearts go out to the victims and to their families. While we mourn their losses, uh, we have immense gratitude for our leaders, including Governor Westmore, who's here today, and the many first responders who continue to risk their lives in hopes of returning more people home. If anyone here today knows, especially the people on the stage, that Baltimoreans are strong and we are resilient, and together we will get through this. Can you please join me right now in a moment of silence? Thank you. I'd like to take this time to introduce some very important people here today. Uh, Governor Wes Moore is joining us today. Uh, Baltimore City Mayor Brandon Scott sitting in front of me. Senator Ben Cardin as well, uh, as well as Baltimore City Council President Nick Mosby. I saw him somewhere right there. Uh, now, of course, uh, I'd like to have the pleasure to introduce the 63rd governor of our great state of Maryland and passionate Orioles fan, Wes Moore. Good morning. While, while today is an important day, it's important that we also acknowledge the moment that we find ourselves in. And today, we are thinking about the families of Dolian Castillo Cabrera and Maynard Suazo Sandoval, who were recovered and identified yesterday. We pray for the family and the families of all of the victims of the Key Bridge collapse, and our hearts are with the families. And to all the families, we are so sorry for this tragedy. Nuestros corazones están con las familias. Lamentamos mucho esta tragedia. And I also want to recognize David Rubenstein. I first had a chance to meet David uh, about 20 years ago when a friend and a mentor of mine, Mayor Schmoke, uh, introduced us and insisted that I give David a call. And the thing that I have always found, always found about David is this. Not only has he always been incredibly generous with his time, uh, every conversation that I've had with David has begun with a simple question. How's Baltimore doing? David is a Baltimore guy. And to have him at the helm of this team means everything to this city and to this state. So David, thank you for believing in Baltimore. And congratulations on the unanimous vote by Major League Baseball declaring you the controlling owner of the Baltimore Orioles. It's an exciting moment, and an exciting moment for the entire team as well. Michael, it's great to see you. Uh, you know, David, David and I and so many in this room, we know that this team is about much more than just a baseball franchise. This team is about the city. The Orioles are the soul of Baltimore. And knowing that, the city is going to need you now more than ever. In this moment, it is important to take stock of what a difference a year can make. Because a year ago, uncertainty clouded everything. One of the most storied franchises in baseball history had just months left on its lease. The default oftentimes was to sign short-term deals because long-term deals were too hard. We had a team of youth and promise but hadn't yet shown baseball just how good they could be. We had a city that was full of hope and potential, but hadn't yet shown the country its full strength. We were coming off eight straight years of 300 plus homicides in the city of Baltimore alone. Our economy was still reeling from an unprecedented 
global pandemic. So from day one, we made the deliberate decision that we were going to work together to make sure that we were going to invest in Baltimore because you cannot have a thriving state if your state's largest city is not thriving as well. And so we decided to work together with local leadership, with the private sector, with leaders of all levels of society and with the community. And we were intentional about investing and working together on issues like public safety. And this year, Baltimore had the steepest one-year drop in homicides in its city's history. We were intentional about working together on economic growth. And Baltimore has one of the fastest growing economies in the entire nation right now. We were intentional about keeping the Orioles in Baltimore for the long term and signed a lease extension for 30 years to keep baseball in this city for a generation. And that's why I'm proud that we had a chance to have remarkable leaders like the new MSA chair, Craig Thompson, helping to lead that charge. So Baltimore is being tested right now. But Baltimore has been tested before. And every time we stand up on two feet, we dust ourselves off, and we keep moving forward. Baltimore may get knocked down, but Baltimore doesn't stay down. Baltimore gets back up. And the reason I came here today is because I'm calling on everybody to do their part. In this game, nobody gets to sit on the sidelines. We need every single Baltimorean and we need every single Marylander to join us in this work to rebuild this bridge and rebuild this city. And that work is happening as we speak. The best minds in the world are coming together to collect the information that we need to move forward with speed and safety in our response to this collapse. Government is working hand in hand with industry to investigate the area, to clear the wreck, and to move the ship. Leaders from across local and state and federal levels are gathering funds to rebuild this bridge. This work is not going to take hours. This work is not going to take days. This work is not going to take weeks. We have a very long road ahead of us. And that's exactly why we need partners like the Baltimore Orioles. Because this team, this team reminds us what we're made of. The Orioles give us hope. The Orioles give us pride. The Orioles remind us what it means to be Maryland tough and Baltimore strong. So today, Baltimore stands strong. Baltimore stands tough. And Baltimore plans on seeing it through. So we are all here for opening day. We're all here for an exciting new chapter. But we also know that in this moment, we are going to move in partnership because together, again, we are gonna have another reopening day. And that will be the reopening of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. And you can bet on that.